The Jared Dillian Show. I'm Jared Dillian. This is The Jared Dillian Show. If you want to call to talk about your money, please call 844-305-7800. That's 844-305-7800. This is The Jared Dillian Show. Give me a second here. Hang on. Okay. Um, I saw a chart today, which was... I like I like charts about feelings. I like charts about sentiment. And there was a poll, and they asked a random sample of Americans if they thought they were thriving. And that's kind of a loaded question. I mean, there's surviving, and then there's thriving. So thriving is you're doing really, really well. So 69.2% of Americans say that they are thriving. And if you look at the chart of that over time, it's the all-time highs, like in the last 50 years. This is the highest percentage of people that say they are thriving. You would never know it based on the news or Facebook or Twitter, uh, social media. Everybody seems miserable. But economically speaking, people are doing better than they ever have. I'm thriving. I'm doing great. You know, I've been knocked around a little bit the last month in the markets, but, uh, you know, I'm sitting on a big pile of cash. You know, and I I come in here every night and I talk to myself in this padded room. But aside from that, I'm thriving. Now, I'm not talking about politics here. This isn't a function of Biden got elected, so everybody is thriving. Okay, There's, there's a lot of factors at play here. It's not Biden or Trump. It's because of the economy. And it's because we got through the pandemic and the pandemic released these animal spirits and people started taking risk again and buying things. So there's some other factors, you know, during the pandemic, consumers deleveraged their balance sheets. They took down debt. By the way, the debt is going up again. There was a big increase in consumer credit this month, but uh, going into the pandemic, people took down debt. So now Consumer debt levels are really at historical lows, you know, and that's one reason that people are thriving is because they don't have these giant credit card bills going out the door every month. So how do you thrive? Okay. And and that's, it's really something I want to talk about on the show because a lot of personal finance, I think is about surviving right? It's about getting by and, you know, just kind of scraping by and saving some nickels and, you know, you put some money in the bank and you're just kind of getting by. I don't want to just get by. How do we thrive? Now, we talked to Bill Perkins, who is the author of Die With Zero. We talked to him on the show not too long ago, and he said something really interesting. He said that human beings are very good at surviving, but they're not good at thriving. Okay, what what does he mean by that? Well, we have these instincts, right? These are these are really like Neanderthal instincts, um, where we are in constant fear that something bad is going to happen. And in the modern world, that means I'm going to lose my job. So you're in constant fear that you're going to lose your job, or there's going to be some exogenous event. You're going to get into a car accident. You're going to have two hundred thousand dollars of medical bills. Your spouse is going to die, who is a source of income. You're going to get cancer. Your company's going to go out of business, right? So we're constantly in fear of all these things happening, and because of that fear, we play it very close to the vest, and we don't take risks, and we're just surviving, and we're not thriving. It's really it's a psychological issue. It's all about fear. So how do you thrive? Okay. By the way, this environment that we are in right now, I mean, it's not an accident that people are thriving because this is exactly the type of environment in which people should thrive because asset prices are going up and investing is easy, or at least it was up until a couple of weeks ago. Everything's going up. You know, and I, uh, I bought that piece of land. It's really been one of the greatest trades of all time. I I doubled my money, and I took a risk. It was a big risk. I took a risk, and it paid off. 
And the timing was spectacular, but I, I didn't do that on purpose. That wasn't by design. I just got lucky, you know. Now is the time to be taking risks like that. Now is the time to thrive. So here are the steps to thrive. Step number one, this is very important. Eliminate debt. You can't thrive if you've got 5000 bucks going out the door every month. So get rid of the credit card debt. Okay, these are the steps you have to take to thrive. You can't thrive with lots and lots of fixed payments going out the door. So get rid of the credit card debt first, then the car loan, then the mortgage. If you're behind on bills, make sure you catch up on all your bills. Part of this is just being organized and conscientious. And remember what we've said before about debt and risk. If you have debt, it inhibits your ability to take risk, and you can't thrive unless you have the ability to take risk. That's step one. Step number two, be careful about adding any new fixed charges, any new debt. Beware of big expenses that you are going to have to finance. Keep your life simple. Pay for things with cash. Cancel the unused subscriptions. That's step two. Step three, maximize your earnings potential, okay? Have a conversation with yourself about what you're worth and how you can maximize your income. And changing jobs is stressful. It's stressful and it's hard. But you have to think, you're in a job, and and, and if you genuinely think that you're undervalued, that you should be paid more, the answer to that question is probably yes, probably out somewhere out there, there's somebody who's willing to pay you more. So do it. And if you're in a job that you don't like, that makes it an easy decision. If you can find a job where you're getting paid 20% more for the same work, then do it. But you also have to think about the potential upside. See, because a lot of people are in jobs where they don't have any upside. There's no room for advancement. There's no stock options. There's no bonuses. You're getting paid 60 grand a year, and that's what you're going to get. So you want the ability to get upside. And that's, that's how people become wealthy is because they have exposure to the upside. You know, and just ordinary people, they get a job with a company. The company goes public. They get compensated in stock and stock options. The stock goes up, and they become millionaires. That's the path to thriving for millions of people in this country. You know, Step number four, take some risk. And step number three is about taking risk because you're looking for a job. Also, step three and a half is to learn about taking risk before you actually take risk. So if you want to invest in the stock market, then do your due diligence, do some homework before you invest in the stock market. If you want to invest in real estate, learn about investing in real estate. Go to the bookstore. Do your homework first. This is a topic for a whole other show, but you have to learn how to invest conservatively. If you're getting advice from friends and family members, they say, you should buy AMC, you should buy GameStop. These are not financial professionals, and you should not listen to them. So you want to talk to people who actually know what they are doing, okay? Step five, and this is the most important step. This is the pinnacle of the steps. Step five is to learn how to spend money. And you're like, what? I thought this was a personal finance show. Aren't all personal finance shows about saving money? Yes and no. Hear me out, okay? Some people don't need to be told how to spend money. They do a great job of spending money, okay? (laughs) Some people don't need to learn that lesson. But other people do need to be told. So, you know, if you have substantial savings, your job is safe, you're saving 20% of your income, you have insurance, you have no credit card debt, all these conditions are met, go buy some new clothes, take vacations, do things that make you happy, but make sure that you are still saving and investing 20% of your income, and then you can do whatever you want. See, a lot of people have fear. It's fear. They have fear about raising their standard of living, and it's an understandable fear because I used to be that way. You know, When I was at Lehman Brothers, I was highly paid, got paid a lot of money. I only took one vacation in seven years. Okay, one, because I really like my job, but two, 
because I was cheap. And the vacation that we took, we went to the Bahamas, but we didn't go to Nassau. We didn't go to Eleuthera. We didn't go to any of these fancy places. We went to Cat Island, which is the most deserted island in the Bahamas. And we got a place that was about $250 a night. It was very rustic, and it was a very cheap vacation. Okay. Now, sometimes it might seem like I spend more time talking about spending rather than saving. And in a way, I think that not spending enough is actually worse than spending too much because these are people with the ability to thrive, but they don't thrive. Also, the personal finance orthodoxy is that we're turning people into those people who don't spend enough. We're not letting people thrive. You see, spending too much, that's a problem, and it has a very easy solution. It's called discipline. You have to get disciplined. People who spend too much are undisciplined. You don't have to buy something whenever you walk in the store. You don't have to buy something when it's on sale. You don't have to spend seven grand on Christmas gifts. So there are people out there who are good at teaching discipline, and they give people a set of tools to follow that forces them to be disciplined. But it's not so easy to solve the problem of not spending enough because that is a matter of psychology, the psychology of overcoming fear, the survival instinct. You need a therapist for that. So here is my lesson for you. Everything is going to be okay. It is. And even if it's not okay, it's still okay. You're not going to starve. You're not going to be homeless. Everything is going to be fine. The world is not a scary place. The world is a safe place forgiving place with lots of opportunity. I'm Jared Dillian. This is The Jared Dillian Show. The Jared Dillian Show.